back when I was a young lad, my father bought one of these when it first came out, the Mattel Electronics in Television, um, which actually had some really good games on it. Um, they even stand the test of time now. Okay, it had some pretty bad ones as well, but um, it's got some very good ones on it. The thing, of course, being a lot of electronics is that they don't always work, and particularly as a system and used RF for video and not for composite, a lot of modern televisions don't want to play such an old system. That's why I've had to use this very old television, a um, 14 inch colour one, um, because it can take the signal okay. So, the first important thing, the reason I'm showing this, is that you need to make sure that the console is in full working order before you do a mod. So we're going to give this a composite mod and uh, check out the results. Talking of such, the mods that you get will look in the same type of, let's say, quality as you've got with the RF. Um, you see that the colours aren't absolutely perfect, there's a little bit of colour bleeding. Uh, my understanding is that that's effectively as good as you're going to get with the composite as well. However, it does add a nice retro feel, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, that's what we're aiming for when we get the system modded. This is Mattel in television game console system uh, from around 1979. This one actually is, uh, is a dead system but I've got the system open so I'm going to utilize this for, uh, for this video. There's a re reset button and an off switch. The system also works via mains power and outputs via RF for the audio and the visual. Take the cover off. Normally the controllers are fed through the hole, um, but I've done it this way for convenience. When you've unscrewed everything, you've got access to these various boards. This takes the main power inwards as AC power and converts via this board into four types of DC power. 16 volts, 12 volts, 5 volts and also minus 3 volts as well. The brown board is to do with the video output to generate the signal to go into the RF and down at the bottom we have the main motherboard. As I mentioned this is actually a damaged board. What I had to do was salvage a chip that wasn't working on something else and put this in but basically these three chips get quite warm but not hot uh, which is why for the heat sink all they have is a piece of bent metal. The um, RF is down here, I took the cover off just to illustrate what it looks like and the controller plugs are over here. One interesting thing about the controller is that it uses nine wires to generate all the button presses on this and it does that by the use of a matrix very similar to a, a computer keyboard where it uses two or three sources of reference so that it knows what button, uh, or side button, or the direction on the D-pad has been pressed. Quite clever. The reason incidentally that these always felt a bit clicky when you press them, and also um, this was quite hard to actually press in the direction that you wanted. I mean it's a 16-way controller, but for example if you tried to move right um, it would be simulating these types of directions quite often. And it was only when I opened up the controller I realised why. The matrix and everything else I was talking about is down to basically these. This has already been cut up, but you can see it's just a printed piece of conductive uh, material uh, put onto acetate. Uh, so of course it's not overly responsive, and of course with the more usage that it gets, the more presses that it has, the less the conductive material works properly. So anyway, with the matrix we were talking about, this is how we've had to connect it together via the diodes just to make sure that the signals only go one way. You can see the sheer amount of wiring that's been involved in order to get the keypad um, and this which is the D-pad working. In reality I've tried several games actually um, with just a standard four-way and it does actually work very well. There's obviously exceptions as, uh, as you'd expect. However, if you do press two together you do get a diagonal although it's not a true diagonal um, you could do that with using AND and also OR logic gates um, but uh, I don't know how to utilize those to be quite honest but so the effect is actually uh, 
quite fine and quite a lot of the television games uh, are maze type games anyway which only need four directions so other things that I've done with this, but I'm going to go into the Alpha Omega project is we've got the cart relocated with 7 inch wires and those pieces of metal we had for the heat sinks have been replaced by one piece of copper keeps everything really actually very cool even when it's been on for several minutes it barely even gets warm over here is the composite video mod so we no longer require the RF and uh, the little mod here also for the audio this of course is that brown board we were talking about for the uh, video and I've also segregated the voltage wires to keep it convenient these go into regulators to produce a variety of different outputs so that everything works via one battery source in this case it's a seven and a half volt lithium battery but of course it will work off a standard seven and a half volt uh, mains adapter if I now turn the system on you can see on the 14 inch television the image is actually pretty good um, if we simulate a button press to turn the system on and then press the keypad uh, for example the one you can see over here it changes to player we can of course press the cancel and select something else and so on and so forth and of course one with the enter button and we're in the system so put it back a bit got the various directions and the door closing just to pick up on the video it's pretty clear it's as good as the original RF One observation, this is the uh, circuit, as I mentioned, for the uh, composite. The guy who produces schematics for this also sells the kit, which is uh, quite compact. One thing I have noticed, actually, um, presumably it's because the capacitors need to charge, but if the system's been off for a little while, you sometimes need to turn it on and off two or three times before it then works. After that, it's fine. So as it must be down to capacitors having to charge um, but this side's not a problem. So the system has been made to be quite flat um, in order to try and get all the systems for the Alpha Omega in as, uh, as far as possible. On some old console systems you don't have uh, nice standard heat sinks. You've got like this for example where you've got a piece of very thick uh, and non-bendy metal uh, that's been just bent around and stuck on top with epoxy. Very very hard to remove um, because if you try to snap the heat sink away from the chip you'll end up probably breaking the chip. After all you've got some uh, one or two millimeter thick metal versus a bit of plastic um, obviously the plastic isn't going to survive so one option here that I found is to use a bit of physics if you've got a shape like this and you're going to bend the outsides it's going to bend the middle and bending the middle it's going to break away from the epoxy as in fact we've done here so to achieve that I'm going to use a pair of heavy duty pincers and just hold them on the top here because then that will be away from the chip and press quite rigidly to basically bend the metal. So let's give it a go. Do a bit on the middle. And in fact that's done it enough that this now detaches.